of the now award-winning Arc Animal Tarot and Oracle deck. Very proud of that. And I am also the publisher and creator of whatismyspiritanimal.com and buildingbeautifulsouls.com, two of the meta uh, largest metaphysical portals on the internet. If you haven't been there, check them out. Tons, like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pages of free information, in-depth articles about any kind of woo-woo you want to know about. And um, I'm here today and every day with the tarot card meeting videos with my dearest soul sister, witch goddess, beloved. Oh my God, I love this woman. How much do I love this woman, <laughs> Dana Winters? Um, she is uh, an award-winning author and uh, with books with Shipper Publishing. And those books are? Uh, Wicca, What's the Real Deal? Uh, Breaking Through the Misconceptions, um, Sacred Objects, Sacred Space, Everyday Tools for the Modern Day Witch. And the esoteric dream book, Mastering the Magical Symbolism of the Subconscious Mind. So clearly, yeah, like she's the smart one. Yeah, clearly, <laughs> she's the smart one. I'm the one that I sound smart. like a geek, don't I? <laughs> yes, but my God. Well, the reason, you know, I've had a lot of people ask me why I had you join me for this uh, tarot card meeting series. And it's because as much as I know the tarot, which I think is pretty well, oh, um, yeah. I. I don't, I'm, I, and I know hundreds and hundreds of tarot readers. I just have never met anybody that knows the symbolism like you do. And from all corners of the world know the symbolism. Um, you know, you're a very powerful, very tapped in psychic, an excellent, excellent medium. But oh, your enduring, enduring love for symbolism. You know, listen, it's what you've spent your academic life researching. I mean, I, I really would say you're an academic of symbolism. And I, you know, I'm a, I'm triple Scorpio. I'm all about the feels, right? So, um, you know, I, I just am so grateful that you joined, joined me for this and agreed to do it because the depth and, and, and the richness that you bring to each of the cards and the meanings is just, it's invaluable to me. And I've had so many of you wild ones write in and be loving this series um, that I just, I'm grateful. So I'm going to stop blathering. We're going to oh, thank you. Thank you make me feel huge. <laughs> thank you. Uh, it's just, the conversation is fun with you anyway, and we always have a good time. So <laughs> we do. I have to say, I always learn something um, when we're working together. So really, you know, listen, everybody, it's all, about, it's all about me. It's not about anybody else. So I really just do these videos just for me. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. So, all right. So we're going to jump right in there, and we are finishing out the series on the twos in tarot. And um, for those, if you if this is just your first video, A, thank you for joining us. But B, um, Dana and I take a very holistic approach to tarot. Um, we base everything that we do on the Rider Weight system, which really is the most enduring, largest popular system that's out there. This is the Two of Swords card, and we will go over its element, its direction, its emotional intention, where it stands in its emotional maturity and progression in the deck, the whole nine yards. So let's start out with those metaphysical correspondences. And I love starting out with um, your, your view of where the different suits sit in their kind of emotional progression in the mm -hmm. tarot. So would you give us a recap of that? I, I'm gonna ask sure. you in every video. I just think it's so valuable. Awesome. Um, well, we start out with the wands. And they are the most useful of all the archetypes, especially with the court cards. You've got the page, the knight, the queen, and the king. And, of course, the page is the most useful of all the wand figures. So when you're looking at wands, you think a lot of it's about communication. They're still mastering communication. Most of it's all about all intellect, and they're still mastering how to navigate the realm of emotion. So oftentimes, they'll be awkward with that emotional progression, have trouble communicating, the page can often be very egocentric. Now, if you get to all the way to the king, well, there's some maturity there, but there's still a lot of work to do. They're more about ambition and pursuing things than they are in focusing on love and things of that nature. The next level up is the cups. That's about maturing into love and pursuing emotions and, and relationships and deep, uh, deep investing of those emotions. Page is still very youthful. And whenever I see the page of cups, I think Pisces because 
Well, there's the, the, all the blue water and there's a fish jumping up out of the cup. And Pisces are the, the zodiac sign that feel very deeply, hurt very deeply. So it's one of those kind of, you remember yes, when you were a teenager? Yeah, yeah. So very sensitive. Yeah. So about the sensitivities of, of emotionality. Um, then we get to swords. And swords is when you're taking up things and you're cutting away what doesn't serve you, looking at your ethics, looking at your what you value in life. Um, and there's two sides to the sword. So, cut, you know, not just cutting away what serves you, doesn't serve you, but also kind of really shaping your ideas about what you want in your life. Um, and it's the truth. It's discovering self-knowledge. Um, and then the pentacles themselves are what you value, not just money. Uh, you know, a lot of people associate them with fertility and abundance. And yes, that applies. But this is about what is valuable to you in your heart, mind, spirit. Um, they are the most mature of all the archetypes. So when you get to the page of pentacles, they're still youthful, but they've grown. They're grounded. They're focused. They know what they want and they're going for it. Whereas you get to the king and that's the most mature archetype. You get the euphoria, euphoria in every state emotionally, physically, sexually, psychologically. And it's like getting out of a rut and like it, your, your life just kind of takes off. You know how people kind of reach that point in their life where suddenly they find all the abundance they've strived for. And I'm not talking about a lot of money. I'm talking about being that's the king of pentacles. So it's about emotional growth in that order. Yep. Okay. So when we're looking then at the two of swords, mm -hmm. um, and I, I think I showed you this before. So yeah. what we see here in the Rider Waite deck is a woman with a blindfold on. She's got two swords crossed. We've got the moon in the background. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, this is the indecision card. It's the stalemate card. If it's reversed, it's the information overload card. Mm -hmm. So this can be a little bit of a difficult card to work with, but... If you take into consideration the other um, metaphysical correlations, like, um, you know, let's start out with the numerology of it. The, number, the twos throughout the tarot, regardless of what suit it is, their overall meaning is what? Balance. Um, Pairing, coming duality, together. Sometimes paradox. Yeah. Um, and in yang forces. Mm -hmm. um, the, the combination of the masculine and feminine energy on a physical level as well as on a spiritual level. Um, but it can also, if it's in a negative sense, depending on the other cards that's around it, it can mean duplicity yeah. or, you know, um, two, two points of view that are, are opposing forces that just keep, you know, they won't come together, they clash. Um, so it depends on the position and what you're looking at in the layout. Yep, exactly. And so, um, the two of um, swords, the cardinal direction is? Um, the cardinal direction, that depends on how you view it. Exactly. Uh, some readers choose um, to look at them associated with east, and some choose to view them as associated with south, and that's because they choose the uh, element, uh, or the element as being um, air or fire, depending on, on the viewer. Fire being associated with the south, air being associated with the east. So Dana, when you're teaching, um, how, cause I know this comes up in class for me all the time when I'm teaching. Um, and I teach intuitive tarot and Dana does a really deep dive into the symbolism of tarot when she teaches. Um, how do you help a student reconcile that? Cause you know, I've been doing this for 30 something years mm -hmm. and even still when I see those cards, when I see the wands or the swords come up, I have trained myself now where I literally see air moving or I see fire bursting off of the wand or the sword or the air moving around. But like I've trained myself because I, I could never quite, well, really, almost like the two of swords. I could never yeah, quite go on one side of it, right. right? So how do you help people make that decision? Mine is very intuitive based. Right. Yours may not be. I would say for, for someone else, for me, I, I look at both sides because I took psychology, a lot of psychology courses along with many, many, many English courses in college. And they always kind of brought all of these theories together. And no one theory was absolutely right. right. So there is no one right way to do it. So, I mean, if you look at it and you're looking at a reading and you associate it with the East and it doesn't seem to apply, certainly look at the South or look at the swords and look at those connotations. If they both resonate, both work. So it really is what you feel, what appeals to you, what's in the layout. Um, I would say how it resonates 
with you, you know, that feeling that this is right. And like you said, intuition, it really is, you know, you just know without knowing. That's the only way I can explain it is like a, you know, you have a certainty, even though you may not know where that certainty comes from. Got it. Okay. Well, one of the things that I do when I'm teaching people this, and I saw this, I don't remember, not that the year matters, but honest to God, it was the year that um, the Raiders of the Lost Ark movie came out and there was the big joke about X marks the spot in, in that particular one. I don't remember which one it was. And, and then I was looking at this card one day, I pulled it for somebody. And if you look, an X, X. Is, crossing, an X is crossing her heart. She's mm-hmm. got her hands like this. And I, I saw that scene in the movie and that's when I knew whenever I pull this card for somebody in a reading, I'm like, listen, X marks the spot. And I explained to them that it, it's, it's gonna have to be heart-based. If you don't have enough data, hardcore data, to, mm-hmm. to put pen to paper and make your list and this and that and come to it like that, you're going to have to go with what your heart says, with what your gut says. And it will okay. never lead you astray as long as you're willing to be honest with yourself. So something you guys out there, if you're watching this video, you can remember, if you're trying to figure out um, as a reader, you know, do swords mean fire for me? Do they mean air for me? Do they mean this direction for me? Do they mean that? I would hope that you could be open and be malleable, that it could be different time to time. But when you're helping your client, it, not only for you, but for them, X marks the spot, which whatever is showing up in your heart is going to be, you know, what it is. And also, Dane and I were talking about this earlier today. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I want to start including it in the videos. You know, when you're looking at a card, and you're looking at something, I mean, this is a, again, this is the card of balance. You don't really have to look at it so very deeply, but when, when I was learning to be a way, way years and years ago, learning to be an evidential medium, uh, it was told to me, okay, envision yourself or feel yourself wearing the cloak of the energy of the person who's passed over. So when I play cards, I wear the cloak of the archetype that's in the card. So for instance, um, the way she's facing, then if I in, I've got her facing the same way I am now, then the moon is over her left shoulder. And then I think of, you know, left is, oh, Lordy, left is masculine, right is feminine, or is it vice versa? Um, actually, it depends, <laughs> depends on where you're coming from on that. Right. Um, because in, in pagan circles, left would be considered the female, and then right, right-hand side of God, you think male. Oh. Um you right. know, it's so, Native American, you get the sky, you just depend, yeah, <laughs> it depends. Right, and here, it might seem, let me pull another card that might be uh, a little more, um, you know, if you look at this card again, well, this card is, I'm facing now the same way. So when I look at the wand that is upright on my yes. right, what, what does that tell me? And it's going down on my left. Whereas if you're just reading it, it's it's gonna look to you like the 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 wand is going up on the left and down on the right, exactly. and that's not really the way that it should be. Now it might sound like we've gone off into left field a little bit, but again, these videos are done deliberately with every bit of symbolism, the, even the most minute stuff that we can think of. Uh, because you just never know what's going to jump out at you in a reading. And the more symbolism you know, the more tarot card meaning symbolism you know in particular, the richer, deeper, and more accurate your readings are going to be. Because i got to tell you guys something. I, I just had this conversation with another friend of mine. And y'all, gone are the days when clients are going to be satisfied with, I see angels around you at this time, supporting you and loving you. And I'm sure they are because that's what angels do. But people don't want to pay $150 to hear that. They want exactly. to hear specific evidence and, and, and get specific communication so that they can see very specific results. And yes, before you write me and go, how do you know that's not what that person needed to hear today? I'm sure they did need to hear that. Um, mm-hmm. But let them pay their therapist for that. You, I would encourage you to strive to be a stronger stronger, stronger, more connected reader, because you can, and you don't have to learn all of this all at once. 
I mean, you know, Dana and I are, what are you, 35, Dana? Because I know I'm 35. Yeah, <laughs> cards i was like here nurse pick a card so um <laughs> anyway but uh and y'all it's taken us years and, and like i said we learn something new every day so getting back to the two of swords okay mm -hmm. so we know the emotional progression we know the numerology we know the element we know the cardinal direction let's the season see is well spring or summer exactly depending yeah. on which way you go so um the associated zodiac signs would then of course be if you go with fire, it's going to be Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. If you go with air, it's going to be Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. And mm -hmm. why the zodiac signs matter is I, if I, listen, if I had a nickel for every time I got this card in a relationship or a love tarot reading, good Lordy. And I can often tell the um, zodiac sign of the person that my queer mm -hmm. and my sitter wants to know about by this card or about my sitter or about them both. And, you know, I'm a freak about Zodiac signs and their traits and personalities because they're all animal based. And you guys know that everything I do, everything I do, I do it for the animals. <laughs> um, it's, it, I, I use that as a foundation for a lot, a lot of readings, a lot of readings. So overall- so With the, with the um, Zodiac signs, it can also be temperaments. It doesn't have to apply to specific- right. Sign, but it could be revealing how someone might behave like a Pisces or like a Cancer or something that affects. Yeah, exactly. So let's get an overview of mm -hmm. the Two of Swords tarot card meanings. But what, what, or tarot card meaning, I should say. What's the overview? Well, the Two of Swords, when the, the swords are crossed over the heart. So this is really a, a heartfelt decision. When I see the female in the card, she's blindfolded at number one. It reminds me instantly of images of justice. So you're trying to make a fair decision or, um, you know, it's like splitting hairs. You've got two swords going in two different directions. It makes me think of, of stories about Solomon, um, King, or King Solomon, where he had two women come in front of him and one had the baby and was the real mother and the other one had kidnapped the baby. And the kidnapper insisted that it was hers and the mother insisted it was hers. And for him to make a decision, he decided, he said that, you know, since I can't figure out which one of you is the real mother, I'm going to cut the baby in half and give you each half. And the one, one who wasn't the mother said, you know, that's fine. And the other one said, no, no, just give her the child. And that's how he knew who the real mother was. So it's making a wise decision by maybe using sometimes harsh means to kind of get to that answer. Um, and it's also, I thought when I, when you held it up, I thought hook and flail. You know, the ancient Egyptians, they kind of go like this uh, with the hook and flail. So you think about the decisions rulers have to make or the decisions that uh, um, maybe your emotion cannot handle. You have to let intellect rule. You see that body of water behind you. It's like leaving your emotions behind you as you sit on concrete land using just concrete facts as you like so much to make a decision. Now, it will lead to a new beginning, I think, when you make that decision because you've got a waxing wound in the sky, which is associated with beginnings. Wax, wax on, wax off. Okay. So I, um, when I see that card come up, uh, I just, I, I, I just always feel like there's information hidden from the person, even if they're hiding it from themselves, but that they already innately know they need protection from because they've got the swords crossed up and ready to fight even if they don't know what they're going to take a swing at. And so I always see the two of swords a bit as a, and, and, and the reason that we go through these, you guys, is because yes, there's about 4 million books out there, many, many very fine books about tarot card meanings and their symbolism and all that kind of thing. And no one is better than the other, but you'll find over time that creating a relationship with your cards and actually a create a, a relationship with the archety archetypes in the cards will, will come that these cards have a certain meaning for you. Each time you see them in a reading, you're like, okay, I know what that means. Mm -hmm. And when I say relationship with the people in the cards, I have literally watched these cards come to life in my psychic mind. This woman has talked to me. I've heard different tones of voice. I've heard 
uh, different ages of voice come in my head and show me different situations and, you know, that kind of thing. So for me, um, I'm always looking at how the woman, or if it is a man who has a lot of feminine tendencies, mm -hmm. can best protect themselves. What is it they need to see? And once we get that, then you know, you can give them a pretty accurate reading. So let's say that you um, pull the two of swords upright. What, what's the tarot card meaning for the two of swords upright specifically? Uh, making a decision, following your gut instincts to do that. And when you said, what does this person need to see? It triggered the idea of clear, clear audience or listening to what's not being said. Because when you're blind, your other senses will make up the difference. So they're heightened. So you're, what are you feeling? What are you hearing? What are you not hearing that you should be hearing? What are you not feeling that should, you should be detecting? Um, it's definitely about new beginnings. And it's about keeping the emotional and rational world in balance. Protecting, you notice that the swords cross the heart. It's not just the heart, it's all the major organs. You've got the lungs, the liver. It's protecting your core interior or your, your base values or yourself even physically. The most vital organs, keeping yourself from detrimental injury now there's mountains way in the background so guess what you're gonna have some more of those decisions in the future yeah yep yeah, exactly um and it also you know a lot of times it's enough just to show your swords you won't even ever have to act on them yes and, and sometimes it's enough just to to draw the shot across the bow and get away not get away with, but have everything work out and balance out and peace be mm -hmm. found with inaction. It, a lot of times it's enough for people to know I will take action if I need to. I don't want to, but I'm not afraid of doing that. Exactly. So I see that a lot um, with this card. And so conversely, if you look at the two of swords reversed, what, what is the tarot card meaning of the two of swords reversed? When I look at a card reversed, I always look at it either as A, a block, or B, a subdued energy of the upright version, or imagine everything kind of falling out of the card or melting out of the card or whatever's upside down is now, you know, having, gravity's having an effect. So, of course, water's going to be on top. Actually, concrete is on top. So, concrete pressing down on water. It's almost like pressure of emotions building up or right. um, in, indecision or the blindfold's removed. So, now you're seeing with your eyes. Uh, but you're not necessarily hearing the things you need to hear, seeing what you need to see. Your your psychic senses are down, um, which leaves you open to duplicity, um, indecision, making yeah. decisions on based on erroneous facts or even lies. Yeah, uh, I always see that when it's um, when the two of swords is reversed. I always interpret that as you have you you, you have um, underestimated your opponent. Yeah. And they are going to come for you hard because you are unprepared. And Me, wide open. Pardon? Wide open. Your vital organs are wide open. Yes, exactly. And, you know, that can be a little bit of a scary thing to tell people. But the last time I told somebody that um, she was she was in line to get a promotion at work. And she oh, no. was just bummed that I would even say, look, I just feel like there's another woman involved with this. I said, she's got jet black hair, um, that Asian or Native American -y kind of hair that she wears in a braid a lot to the side. Mm -hmm. She goes, yeah, there's a lady just like that at work, but she's the nicest person ever. And I said, she's a snake in the grass. And actually what ended up happening was um, she did not get the promotion. And after the fact, one of the secretaries in the office had pity on her and forwarded her an email. And this lady had sold her out, said all kinds of stuff that wasn't, you know, true or whatever. Now that's on the boss for, you know, acting on that and making decisions on that or whatever. But the point was, is that that's a hard thing to tell people, especially when they don't see it. It's a harder thing, I think, to tell people when they do see it, but they don't feel empowered to um, act on it. Yeah, to act on it or to defend themselves. And so what I always um, tell people is that, you know, find a card in the deck that to you means empowerment and safety and, 
you know, all that and sleep with it under your pillow, really meditate on it, do your mantras over it, just start connecting with that archetype rather than this archetype. And there, there are plenty of ways to turn readings around. Not, I, I just don't think everything is 100% set in stone. You know, I, I think we have full, full will every single millisecond of okay. every single day. Yes. Okay. So um, I think that is about, oh, wait, not true. Okay. So in particular, remember I said earlier, I see um, tarot swords in love readings a lot. Mm -hmm. or two of swords what does it signify to you in particular the two of swords love what well, when interpreting a if you're to interpret a love reading um the the symbolism of the two of swords could be one of the first point of interest you're talking about um is in this undecided being pulled in two different directions yeah um th they could be on the fence about taking things into deeper levels of emotion Whereas, you know, it's not like they're not in love, but there's, they're being very guarded and protecting themselves emotionally. I like to consider the fact that they likely have old emotional coding that's affecting their behavior now because they're blindfolded. So things that they're not seeing, not, they may necessarily be feeling it. They can hear it in their head. Like uh, they hear, you know, sometimes you hear your feelings that your feelings kind of rise up and you know you're feeling a certain way and you don't understand why old emotional coding from old relationships that still kind of bubble up from the subconscious. It's not a thought process. It's a feeling and you're reacting to that. And that's affecting you and pulling you in two different directions into the past. And of course, um, in the present moment. Now the brain doesn't realize that the past is the past. You can think about the past right now, 10 years ago, and it'll feel like it just happened yesterday. Right. So your mind is like caught between two places. Exactly. Uh, and you're, and that, you can't get anywhere until you get out of it. Right. And that can be, um, two, it's caught between two people, like a love triangle. It's caught between two different careers, two different jobs, two different houses, two different pets, two different friends. I mean, it can be two different anything, right? Um, your heart. Yeah. Yeah, internally, it's, yeah exactly. But I see this a lot. This is one of, this is one of my favorite readings to give. So I'll, I'll say to a person, you understand in my office or when a reading with me, there's no judgment. I don't care who you're sleeping with. I, I mean, you know, let's, I have boundaries, right? Obviously children, animals, older people, that kind of thing, you know, but I don't care. And I don't care how many people you're sleeping with, but it's come up in your reading that there is a cheater, cheater, bow beater in the midst. And my gut tells me it's you. Well, my God, people start to, you know, no one wants to be called out for that, but if they're open and they understand that I'm coming from a place of love and I'm just channeling what spirit is telling me to tell mm -hmm. them, um, that will be so helpful to them and everybody else around, they'll, they'll understand that because if I had a nickel for every person who said, I don't feel bad for cheating. No, I do not. Why is that? Would you want it done to you? Would you this, would you that? And it's, I get this card a lot for people who will not see themselves for the very situation they're creating. They yes. are so wrapped up in he won't leave his wife, she won't leave her husband, or she won't leave her wife, or he won't, you know, whatever sex the relationship is, right? Same sex, whatever. They are so caught up in what they want and blaming the other person because they won't leave. Mm -hmm. They're not even seeing that they have created this maelstrom themselves by engaging with a, a person who's attached. And it isn't until they can take that blindfold off that they can make honest decisions and, and move forward. So I, you know, I see that a lot. So um, how sometimes it can be emotionally cheating too, not just physical. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. So what what do you? Because uh, oh, Lordy, you know. I, um, the people that will call me and go, well, can I just pay you $5 to give me a yes or no answer? No, mm -hmm. I'm not one of those psychics. We're not doing that because traditionally, if you're going to flip cards for somebody and they just want a straight up yes or no to something upright, the upright version of the card is yes. And the inverted version of the card is no, but y'all, it's a maybe. <laughs> I get maybe from if that bad boy. Could be, could be. <laughs> if you pull the two of swords upright and it's for somebody, okay. 
But what if you pull the Ace of Wands for somebody and it's inverted? Mm -hmm. These cards mean completely different things. And mm -hmm. I mean, there's so little in this world that's absolute. Why, why would you want just an absolute yes or a no? Why, why wouldn't you want something that would give you more clarity on the situation? And as a reader, why wouldn't you want to be able to offer that to your clients? So right. Dana, if you see the two of swords upright in a yes or no reading, yes or no reading, what, I mean, we've talked about the two of swords a little bit ad nauseum, but when it's just straight up yes, what does it mean? Because, you know, everybody I wants to play kind of straight up to it. That's the problem. A straight up yes for me would be yes or no, like the sun card. You know, the sun card, <laughs> that's not even a yes or no either, really. Um, I, there's too much gray area for me to say yes or no, especially with the two of swords. You're going in two different directions. Um, it, uh, yes, but, and then there's a whole strew of what can come after but, depending on what the question is. Uh, I wouldn't feel ethical about saying yes or no to something that has so much gray area. Right, exactly. Because it could be a maybe. It could be, yes, but you're about to fall flat on your face if you don't listen to the rest of this answer. And you're going to base your decision on yes, and then you're going to call me back and say, why did you do that and didn't tell me? And no. Right. <laughs> and so, no. conversely, if you see the two of swords in a yes or no reading and it's upside down, inverted, reversed, and it's no, what do you yeah, think? I think that answer is a little bit more solid because when you're looking at the two of swords in reverse, it's like the swords are kind of falling away. The indecision falls away. The answer is a little bit more certain. And because it was a waxing moon that turns into a waning moon, I would say it's a definite yes for endings coming up. But endings mean new beginnings. I'm sorry. There's still a huge gray area there. Right. Yep. And, you know, you guys, I would I would implore you to remember that the two of swords is in today's card. And that is the coming together where once there was one, now we're two. And that makes us in theory, more powerful, you know, if you take away that one is the Godhead, it's the all that is, it's the this. Um, and sometimes that, that alliance you have to create, that relationship you have to create is with yourself. It's not always with the other person and it's not always about the other person, which I have to say, since this crazy, I call it the pandemic, y'all, pandemic, <laughs> this, this crazy covid nonsense started it is crazy. gosh have i had a so of people that are just doing i just admire them so much because they're doing this deep deep dive into self and people that have been terrified for years to make changes in relationships and careers man they are they are getting to know themselves. They are finding balance within themselves, connecting with their higher self, with their soul's purpose. And they are moving ahead. No ifs, no ands, no buts, no apologies. And everybody else better clear out of the way. And it's a beautiful thing to watch. Yes, some people are going to get hurt in the melee. Some people are going to get hurt, you know, as they're plowing through everybody, like, you know, a bowling pin through, you know, get, getting a strike. But when the dust settles and the smoke clears, they're going to be such a greater contribution to themselves, to the world around them. It's really just a thing of beauty. So just remember that, you guys, that any of the two cards can also mean that it's a time where your client is really needing to see their relationship with themselves. Right. OK. All right. So I think that about does it. Um, Dana, thank you so very much. It's always such a pleasure, um, you know, and you guys, wild ones, we we thank you for joining us and thank you for watching. You guys just make our day when you send us emails and put, you know, comments or ask questions or whatever. And there are links below in the comments section or in the notes section. If you'd like to book a reading with Dana, her link is there. If you'd like to book a reading with me, my link is there. Um, I really, really implore you if you're a reader of any kind. Even if you are just learning tarot, but you love, love, love animals and you're drawn to shamanism and spirit totem power animals, please get the art. It is a hundred card deck. Um, and then there are 49 add-on cards that you can buy, which is gorgeous. gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, but, you know, adding the animals and their symbolism to a reading Man, I've watched people take the hardest messages because I was able to go, so, you know, raccoon really means, or, you know, look, a hyena really means, and they're so focused on their reaction to that, you know, a little bit of a gnarling hyena 
that they, it, it almost seems like it, they, they take the messages as, okay, well, this is just a progression and it's natural rather than some reader saying, because they hear it that way a lot. Even when you haven't said it, they feel like they're being scolded, no matter how gently or kindly you say it. But man, when they connect with the animals, holy cow, the growth that I see people do and the things that they find peace with in their heart. And in y'all, please check out, please check out the Arc Tarot. I, I think it will serve you in very good stead. And please be sure um, the links to, to Dana's books are down uh, in the comments section. Again, we appreciate you. And your job this weekend always is to what? To stay wild. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.